Ancient history tells us about worshippers who held fire sacred. Metallurgists also can be called fire worshippers. Pyrometallurgy, from ancient Greek pyre, meaning fire, based on high temperatures acting on ore and concentrates, is one of the key sources of environmental problems in today's world. Adoption of low waste and wasteless technologies, improvement of hazardous substance disposal methods and complex utilisation of natural resources are the principal and most effective approaches in the efforts to reduce or totally eliminate metallurgy impacts on the environment. All of these are being successfully employed at Kumtor, the leading enterprise of Kyrgyzstan's non-ferrous metallurgy. The company understands only too well that the future requires dramatically fresh approaches. Ore processing at Kumtor is based on a universally adopted technology. The gold production technology that was developed long ago and ever since been widely employed the world over is both simple and great. It includes a series of consecutive and interdependent steps. Ore crushing and grinding, flotation and gold recovery by cyanidation, after which the resultant gold concentrate in the form of cathode sludge is washed out in electrolysis baths. Filtered, dried up and fed to the smelt furnace. Now, let's look at this in order. The ore is hauled from the pit to the primary crusher, a place where huge boulders are crushed to a size of 20 centimetres, after which they are conveyed to a special ore stockpile. The gold ore does not stay here for a long time, as it will be fed to the mill. The great rotating drums containing steel balls are special mills. One after another they crush and grind the ore to the size of fine particles. The gold mill at Kumtor employs a unique SAG mill installed here in 2005. After passing through its drum, the concentrate is ground to particles of less than 20 microns in size. This degree of grinding enables the gold mill to increase its gold production. This process, from beginning to end, involves water. At first it helps suppress dust and next, it becomes a solvent for sodium cyanide. The process flow sheet includes the sulphide or froth flotation, the non-ferrous metals recovery process, which is unique for Kyrgyzstan. In Greek, flotation means immersion. The technology we employ here is called froth flotation. The flotation concentration is a hydrometallurgical process in itself. Gold at Kumtor is found in the finely disseminated form contained in a gold-bearing mineral called pyrite, whose chemical formula is ferrous disulfide, or iron disulfide. So, during flotation, we treat the concentrate by separating it from the tailings, the mill head grade is normally 4.5 grams per ton. During flotation, however, the ore is separated into a concentrate and tailings. The gold grade of the concentrate grows to between 30 and 40 grams per ton, while that of the tailings is between 0.4 and 0.5 grams per ton. What attracts the metallurgists is not only the method's usability, not only the possibility of optimizing a complicated and labor-intensive process, minimizing hazardous emissions, but primarily the ingenuity of the process, for it makes it possible to process even that ore, which previously was regarded as lower than cut-off grades of less than one gram per ton. The energy of pyrite surface tension drops and pyrite becomes attracted to the nearest place where air is contained, that is, to air bubbles. The air bubbles are supplied by air lifts in flotation plants. Thus, the bubbles come to the surface creating a froth layer in the upper part of the slurry. Surrounding the flotation plants, there are skimmers that skim the froth off continuously. This froth is pyrite, a gold-bearing mineral. But the gold concentrate produced during flotation is not gold itself. Before the smelt furnace is launched, the gold particles mixed with pyrite will have to pass through a series of technological cycles. 
increased demand for gold and exhaustion of deposits containing high-grade ore in the mid-1900s forced scientists to look for new, more efficient gold recovery methods. The problem was settled thanks to gold's ability to dissolve in the cyanide solutions. The chemical reaction is as follows. This method was called ore and concentrate cyanidation. During cyanidation, the ground gold ore is treated with a lean solution of sodium cyanide, after which the resultant compound is brought into contact with zinc dust or special ion exchange resins. These substances are used to recover and settle pure gold. The remaining stages of the gold recovery process are quite easy. Initially, cyanidation was adopted by large plants, yet shortly afterwards it was modified and now it is, in fact, the sole universally accepted gold recovery method. The Coom Tor mine is amongst the leaders in the employment of this method. Sodium cyanide is a powerful poison. In terms of its application, transportation, storage, as well as preparation of working cyanide solutions are prescribed by special regulations which must be strictly observed. This is an integral part of the organization of work at the gold mill. Safety remains the primary concern of the gold mill itself. Otherwise, the health and even life of our employees may be under threat. Hence, it is international practice to maintain a certain pH, specifically alkaline, at gold mills employing cyanide. At our mill, it is between 10.5 and 11. Why? The fact is that cyanide may be liquid or gaseous, which is very dangerous. To keep cyanide wholly in the liquid state and preclude its emission into air, we have to maintain the alkaline pH. That's why the gold mill has safe working conditions with no cyanide vapors in the air, which can be seen by means of special gas analyzers installed in places of potential hydrocyanic acid vapor emissions. To recover gold from cyanide solutions, carbon is used. After passing through the chain of slurry tubs in which cyanidation of ore takes place, activated coal absorbs gold in solution and becomes enriched up to 400 to 4,500 gold grams per tonne. Next, the gold containing coal is fed for desorption, during which the alkaline solution of sodium cyanide washes gold away from the coal after which the resultant gold is fed to the electrolysis baths. Coal has a microporous structure built of three types of pores, micropores, mesopores and macropores. If you examine coal under a microscope, you will see it has a sponge-like structure. It is precisely in the micropores that gold deposits because the micropores are the size of gold ions, 264 picometers. The gold mill has constantly been upgrading its equipment and improving the process flow sheets from the outset. The most difficult thing, the employees say, is to abandon tradition, overcome the inertia of thought. Non-ferrous metallurgy has been in existence for 8,000 years. The technological cycles which have become classic today came to us from the dawn of history. It is acknowledged investment and development pays back. The present-day technologies increased gold recoveries and reduced consumption of reagents. They help use raw materials more efficiently and successfully deal with the problem of waste and environmental pollution. The gold mill's rated throughput is 17,000 tonnes of ore per day. The automated control system, Foxborough, enables the dispatcher to monitor and control the entire process flow sheets from the control room. The ore processing string ends with electrolysis. How it works, everyone knows from school physics textbooks. Positively charged ions move to the cathode on which electromechanical restoration of the metal in electrolysis baths takes place. 
negatively charged ions move to the anode where electrochemical oxidation occurs. As a result, substances settle on the electrodes in amounts proportionate to the cutoff current. In other words, the positively charged ions, cations, deposits on the cathodes to produce the cathode gold sludge. It consists of the particles of gold, silver and other metals in the amorphous state. That's when preparations for the next stage, smelting, begin. Ионное растворенное золото после процесса десорбции переходит в раствор. The gold sludge is the product of electrolysis. Following desorption, dissolved gold settles on the cathodes in electrolysis baths. This gold will be washed away from the cathodes, filtered and dried up in drying boxes. The solid mass we obtain at this stage has a grayish tint, after which the gold sludge containing the brown flux is placed into an induction furnace. Gold smelting is the most picturesque, mysterious and closed of processes. It is the stage for which millions of psalms were spent and the efforts of nearly 2,000 people were made. The mill operation is automated to the maximum. A great deal of things are done by machines. People here act as mere observers and controllers. In contrast, metal smelting and bar pouring are, however, a cycle which involves human input. The gold sludge and reagents that are placed into the furnace will be mixed up only manually. The dry cathode sludge will be mixed up with special reagents, fluxes, which are used to separate the sludge into gold and byproducts for gold purification purposes. The temperature in the induction furnace may be as high as 1200 degrees centigrade. As we know, gold's melting point is 1064 degrees, while silver's is 840 degrees centigrade. The sludge melts in the furnace, while the difference of gold's relative density causes gold to deposit in the bottom part of the furnace. The admixtures, though, come to the surface. Thus, there are two different layers. The lower one is the gold and silver alloy, while the upper layer is a melted mass of admixtures mixed with the flux. The first gold bar was produced at Kumtor on the 31st of December 1996. In May 1997, commercial production began. It is a modern metallurgical operation now. You will see no rivers of melted metal. All the employees have to do is click the toggles of the control panel, a process not so much showy as efficient. The average annual gold production is about 18 tonnes. But even these bars are yet far from being pure gold. They are known as the door bars, containing gold of between 70 to 85 percent. The rest, although called admixtures, is valued no less than gold itself. Silver is always found in association with gold, its percentage being 15 to 30 in our bar. The induction furnace meets the highest environmental standards. A special system controls the purification of its emissions. The Kumtor company has succeeded in employing the power of the four elements – water, air, earth and fire. Moreover, it offers an example of responsible attitudes towards the environment. The mine employees realise that it is in the interests of the business to minimise environmental risks. Therefore, from the outset, without waiting for changes in the regulations, the mine launched programmes reducing environmental impacts under which the mine modernised its operation and built the effluent treatment plant. This unique chemical treatment plant is the backbone of the mine's environmental programme. 
the effluents containing residual cyanide are purified stage by stage to the extent that their discharges contain admixture-free water. This process is under the constant control of environmentalists, both of the company and government agencies, including independent experts. Весь технологический процесс очистки сточных вод не только от цианидов, а также от тяжелых металлов контролируется. The process of removing cyanide and other heavy metals from effluents is wholly controlled by Kumtor's environmental experts. Every two hours, they take samples and conduct express analysis at every treatment stage. This is the first guarantee that effluent treatment agrees perfectly with the method we use, the INCO method. The second guarantee is that all essential reagents are used in the required amounts, enabling us to purify the effluents by 99.9% and remove hazardous substances like cyanide and heavy metals. The Kumtor mine employees are confident that green industry will replace ordinary industry. Great sums are spent every year on modernization and advanced technologies but it's difficult to express the environmental effect in specific expenditures because all this is about the future ecosphere of the Earth. An underground project is in progress at Kumtor. A decline is under construction to the southwest of the central pit, near the southern side of the Davidov Glacier. Underground production will reduce the mine's impact on the glacier's natural pulsation, movement and life. But what man cannot stop is the glacier's melting due to global climate change. Lidnik. Давыдово продвинулся вниз, то есть часть льда попала на более низкие горизонты, где тайне больше. The Davidov glacier has moved downwards and is partially in an area of more intensive melting. Worse still, it got cracked during the descent. As a result, its surface has widened. The formerly smooth surface became cut and the melting process quickened. On the other hand, what didn't melt this year would melt in 10 years all the same. If global warming persists, melting will continue whether or not the Kumtor mine operates there. Ours is a fragile world, and it's extremely important to preserve it for future generations. The present-day project at Kumtor has great ambitions, substantial financing, and perfect concord with environmental standards. By making effective use of the four elements, water, air, earth and fire, the company has proved that man can become a fifth element in maintaining the environmental balance. <laughs>